All opinions expressed by the program participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Upscale Love for You. The program participants... Opinions are based on the information that they consider from their own knowledge. No expressions or accuracy is related to upscale love for you. And welcome, everyone. This is yours truly, Dr. Fabulous in the house. And tonight we are ready for some tantalizing talk. That's right. We are going to talk about our subject is romance and relationships in the workplace. And tonight it is going to get hot and heavy because we got some questions for you. And with that being said, oh yes, I'm from the original 305, the Miami, Florida, but now I reside in the 912 Hinesville, the city country just for you. But nevertheless, I'm going to turn it over and introduce this beautiful chocolate jewel, and that's the one and only my girl. So take it over, Chocolate Pearl. Hey, 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 it's Chocolate Pearl, your girl the girl with the silky chocolate skin and the pearly white smile. Now I'm going to introduce my brother, Dr. Feels So Good. Take it on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Feel Good, the man with the golden voice, the lady's choice, and of course, smooth as a Rolls Royce. Coming to you live from the 571, getting it done, and I want some. Be, in, be entertained, be informed but at best be interested. We ask that you raise your hand before you get up for questions. You be acknowledged, then speak. We ask that you refrain from using profanity. If you, have, if, if you, if you can't, we're, we're, we're still okay with it. We just try to make this a friendly show. And, all, and, and last but not least, respect everybody's opinion because everybody's opinion is like a butthole. We all have one, but nobody wants to necessarily smell yours. I'm passing it off to Dr. S Dr. Seductive. Go on, Doctor. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dr. Seductive. Seductive, sexy, and sweet, and the person that you really, really want to meet. And I'm coming to you from the 803, where it's hot and hot, 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 like me. A honey, thick and sweet. All right. Back to you, Dr. Fab. Okay, these introductions are getting so, mm, mm, mm. but okay, tonight we are going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to start this evening off with the one and only Chocolate Pearl. You're on mute. All right, all right, all right. All right, tonight we're talking about workplace romances. Has anyone ever had a workplace romance relationship that went awry? And if it did, tell us about it. Anyone? Well, no I, never, I never had one because I had too much to lose. And plus I have a saying, do not use the bathroom where you eat, you know, an adult way of thinking. <laughs> Um, y'all yeah, rejected that title, but hey, that's what I, <laughs> that's, that's what I, that's what I'm going to say. Well, I never had an affair, but I did have school husbands and that made it really nice for me because I thought about them some days of the week where I bought them lunch and some days of the week they bought me lunch and it made it real nice but we kept it strictly professional and we would tease one another about being husbands, um, school husbands, school wives. But when we left the schoolhouse, we left that there. So with that being said, I see Dr. Seductive has her hand up. Go right ahead, Dr. Seductive. 
Yes, I did have um, a workplace affair. Um, it was my very first married boyfriend, Dr. Fabulous. Um, and that's how it started at work. Um, he was my trainer, so he trained me and then um, he trained me to, to work at a store in another city. And I started working at the store in another city. He got fired from the company we were working for and got hired in the same other city. So it just continued. Um, we're still friends, but the affair, um, let's just say it got a little hot and heated and I ended up moving back to Texas. How about that? All right. Anybody else had a, a workplace relationship, a love affair, and it went wrong? Does it count that his wife called me once? You on mute. You was on mute, Anson. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Oh, did you pick up the phone call? <laughs> I did. I did. So, uh, no, my question was, what does go around mean? Did it go, go bad? bad? Well, I mean... I mean, I don't think it went bad. I had I had one before, but she wound up dating a guy that worked there as well. Oh, you know, so she after was having a threesome started, without you. Well, no, well, no, because he didn't know. He didn't know what was going on. But oh. she wound up dating him while you know we still had our rendezvous. Okay. Anybody else? I've had one myself, but if anybody else uh, had one, let me know before I speak. My son married his wife. They met at work. So that was a good one. That was mm -hmm. a good one. Well, actually, I met my husband at work. Um, we worked in the same place, not for mm -hmm. the same company, but for the, you know, in the same, we worked for the hospital. And um, we met uh, there and eventually we got married. Um, I did have um, a workplace romance and I also had work husbands. That, oh, yeah. um, I did have work husbands that I didn't have a relationship with. I'm actually still good friends with his wife um, when we, uh, cause we used to sing um, competition, you know, choir competitions and then meet up at different churches that we sang, you know, different churches, but sang together. So yeah, um, he was, he had like maybe about 10 wives. <laughs> we always counted on him. You know, he was a good friend and mm -hmm. actually we kept him out of trouble. But um, I did have a workplace relationship with a younger guy and um, that kind of was good, but he had a relationship with someone else that he just didn't want to, settled completely settled and um I was in between situations and I said hey this is fun but nobody ever knew nobody ever knew we you know you would have thought he was my um work husband you know we communicated in in the open and you know we stayed separate but nobody ever knew that we had a little lunchtime rendezvous <laughs> So it didn't necessarily go awry, but um, it was fun now, while, it, while it lasted. Now, when yeah. you say a lunchtime rendezvous, do you mean a rendezvous rendezvous? Or do you mean you all just ate lunch together, held hands, played footsies? Good girls back don't tell. Back of the car. Oh, oh they, don't, they, ate some, they ate something. It might not have been lunch, but they ate something. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Some sausage and pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, 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 my. Yes, okay. yes. If you're going to do it right, do it right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's different. Um, Tracy D, where you at? Hey, I need hey. to hear your thoughts about this here <laughs> work and romance. I have not um, ever had an affair at work. Like, ever. Like, mm -mm. <laughs> Wow. So you was never interested in someone that you did work with and thought that y'all can have something? 
I'm I'm really big because I'm in HR on like fraternization. Oh, okay. I would try to stay away, even if I think people are fine. It's like, oh, I don't even look at them wrong. So I try right. to stay away from that. Right. Yeah. Well, we can understand your situation because like you said, you are HR. And like I said, no one has ever, still to this day, him and I are still friends, but we have ne- nobody ever knew. Yeah, I, I do have my my school husbands. Um, um, when I first started teaching, there was this guy, and I'll never forget. Like I came in one day and I had my I had cut my hair and colored it, and he was like, "Oh, your hair is cute. I really like it." And then he walked off, and then he came running back. He said, "What if my wife got her hair cut?" And I didn't notice, but I noticed your hair was cut because you're my work wife. And I was like, "Uh, yeah, that probably won't happen." He was like. It might, it might, but we were, we were, uh, we taught, but we both taught seventh grade science and we were right beside each other. So, you know, like she said, he did the copying, you know, he bought me a Coke every now and then. I won't even talk about my little short affair with the Coke man who used to leave me a Coke every time he came to fill up the machine. Ooh. And I, <coughs> you did something else at the workplace. You, you said, sure it was Coke? You could have your name for no reason. <laughs> I had a Coke and a smile. Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's but I my did. thing is this: I like I said, nobody. Arnie said you, I'm, you know, are probably not sure to somebody. Nobody really knew um, because we at work we really played it cool. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we went to lunch. Sometimes we went to lunch with other people, with, you know, with us, and you know, we sat out in the open where people could see us and. He always sat on the other side, no, never played any footsies. We we kept it on the truly down low. Yeah, but when um, you were in, when you were having your episodes, somebody you somebody saw some fogged up windows. No, no, because so it wasn't in the parking lot. We would drive. We would drive like we were going out to eat. Oh, oh and then okay. Go out to and eat. then okay. stopping. Okay. Yeah, we had a little I... location that we went to. That yeah, and we had a good old time. Uh-huh. Our business, our grown oh, folk goodness. business. <laughs> But oh. the thing about it, the crazy thing about it, I, you know, I was dealing with him, but people thought I was messing with some other people that I wasn't even messing with. <laughs> mm, so, that's know, how that it always me. is, girl. Yeah, that, that was the big thing is they thought I was messing with some other people and I wasn't. And they had no clue that I was messing with him. Okay. Does anybody else have any um, stories or know of somebody or know of a story? that they had a workplace romance that possibly went awry or just had a workplace romance? Well, I don't want to call anybody out, but when I see names come up on the board and I don't know the name, I just see iPhone. Can iPhone identify themselves or say who they are or where they're from? Even you can give me a cat call name. A cat call name is a fictitious name made up. But iPhone, are you with us? iPhone. Okay, well, I guess iPhone said they're just going to call in and listen and not share their identity or anything. Chocolate Pearl, you have any more or any other questions? No, that's all the questions I have. Okay. Um, Mine was a two part, but I kind of answered it and not a lot of people had anything to say on it. So I will hand it back over to you, Dr. Fabulous. Well, well, let me tell you, I've never ever had an on on workplace affair or any of that. I guess you can call me boring, square cutter, all of that. But my questions this evening, I have two. Have you ever had a workplace romance relationship? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading yours. Okay. This is my question. When you have an on-site work relationship, the flirtation, do you find yourself flirting? Um, Are you feeling like every time you see that person, your mouth is salivating? Or did it come into play where it actually decreased the work production? How did that happen? How did you handle that? Did it interfere with any of the work production going on? Or did you all just work normal? Work normal. You worked normal? 
So yeah. you mean to tell me when you saw her, you didn't get that look like glimmer in your eye or give her a quick smile or anything? Just a memory of what we did when we wasn't around work. Oh, That's okay. So you kept it real life. professional, a very yeah. nonchalant looking face. Okay, I got you. I got you. Anybody else? Hey, Dr. I, Seductive? I, oh, I was about to say, go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Seductive. Um, I do know of a workplace relationship that um that came out in the open, uh, a principal and a teacher. And mm -hmm. um that principal actually ended up getting removed um and it's happened a couple of times actually in our in our county where a principal was um having a relationship with a teacher and the principal got removed um and the, the teacher was still there um so it i guess it can have some bad effects um but i would think that productivity might go up if you you know you're happy you know oh, okay well, the reason why I thought that it might go down, because you always want to, you know, it's almost like eating your favorite dessert when you have it. You want a little bit more and a little bit more. So I thought that would cause the productivity to go down. But my question was basically a two-part question. And the second part of my question is... When the office romance have gone sour, you know, when a woman is scorned and it get real ugly, do she now say, if you were dealing with upper management or someone that had a higher position, does she now say it was sexual harassment? That's my question. When the, when the romance goes sour in the workplace, do you play like, hey, this was sexual harassment when you thought you was getting ready to get that raise and you didn't get the raise and you didn't get that higher position, but you've been laying on your back. Now you call it sexual harassment. I see Dr. Feelgood has his hand up. Dr. Feelgood, go ahead and interject on that. Um, there's, a, there's a book that's out being sold by um am that's being sold on amazon it's called destroy a man now or damn um it's a book on how to leverage um leverage sexual harassment charges to get an outcome to get somebody removed from power or out of the thing um the issue is the dynamic of the game is people can leverage accusations whether they be true or not that can ruin that can ruin the person being accused and nothing no nothing can really happen to the person because if they if you do it becomes retaliation so um that is a bad part of it um i've known i've known guys i know guys and gals who got hemmed up in the military because they fraternized with enlisted or fraternized with a lower ranking person. Uh, one of my frat brothers, he was about to, he was about to take command of a, a high organization. And he got hemmed up because he had just gotten divorced and was messing with it. She wasn't younger in age, but she was younger in rank. He, he was, and they, they wound up getting married. They got two kids now that, but you know, they're both retired, but they, um, but that it came out now they were both they they both weren't married they were both unmarried at the time but the perception was that he had undue influence over her so okay. that became a situation now there were other situations where everybody knew that x was messing with y and then when y when x broke x broke up with y y came back and said hey i was i was coerced i was i was harassed and even though even though we knew it wasn't true we still had to go through the we still had to go through the investigation and even though it was unsubstantiated that person's career was shot mm. that person so let me shot. get a clearer understanding if you're in the military you can date someone on your same level 
you just can't date down. Yes and no. Yes okay, and no. Give me, fill me in, fill me in. Um, fraternization in the military is treated a lot differently. Um, if, even if you're the same rank, if you're in the same organization, you, they, you, they, they discourage it. It's not illegal. But if you're an officer or a warrant officer and you date an enlisted person, that's illegal. That You can actually catch charges for that. Wait, wait, wait. However, if you're a warrant officer? Or an officer and you date enlisted, you can get in trouble for that. Okay. Even if you're not in the same, even if you're not in the, in the same organization. Oh, so you could be in the army and then if you date somebody in the Navy or the, or the Marines, you okay. get in trouble for that? You can, they don't, they don't prosecute that as much, but you, but you can, that technically, technically you can. And, and it's not only, you know, not only within, not only different cohorts, but um, even within, in officers, like I, I retired as a Lieutenant Colonel. If I was a data Lieutenant, a, a first, second Lieutenant, which is entry level, nothing illegal about that, but the perception because oh, okay. it affects good, it, it affects um, discipline, order, and good discipline. Good discipline and order, because you have to have organizations are run to have minimum distractions. And when that, and when somebody's, when you're dating someone that's not, that's not at your level, there's perceived, there's perceived um, favoritism, and it yeah. goes on, and it goes on civilian and and. and as well as the military, but in the military is punitive. You can you can actually be prosecuted and court martialed for it, and they can do also administrative actions. And and if it if it goes south, it, your career is pretty much shot. Um, well, why do why do we see a lot of military people married? I mean, they still well, got married and they're still in the military. Yes, but they got married early. They got oh, married before early they and, ranking went up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it, for example, uh, one of my frat brothers, his mother, his mother was enlisted when he got, when she got married to her husband. She became an officer and she retired. She still actually, she's still active duty, her husband retired, but he was still enlisted. That was allowed because when they got married, they were, they were both enlisted. Okay. Cause I, I so don't know how my, my, um, how my son's, um, in-laws, but they're married. Um, he is now retired, but she is an officer. Um, I think she's a she's an officer, right? In in um, but I didn't. I don't know if they got married before they got enlisted or any of that. Yeah, they, if she's a she's an officer, they got married while they were both enlisted. Oh, okay, but that's 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 legal. But that's but as far as military, that's those are the issues that you know that can that can happen. And people lose people lose careers. Some people lose their lives over that. That's all I got. Okay. okay. Well, I had my hand up, Doctor Fabulous. Yes, I, yes. I, I was I, coming to you. I was coming to you. Go ahead. Uh, okay. And I, but I've noticed that um, I've never experienced what you had asked about, but you see it on TV all the time, where <clears throat> if um, someone, you know, people in a higher position. Um, date someone in a lower position and they break up what happens to them you know um, do they retaliate and what have you but you see that all the time about um, it say like the owner of the company is dating the secretary because you get that all the time they wind up sometimes they wind up getting married but if they break up um, what happens to the person like the secretary what happens to her does she get fired or, you know, does she get, does he, does she, you know, go and tell his business or do stuff that he don't like? You see that all the time. Right. Um, I just, I was hoping that someone that was on here that would either witness it or experience it would let us know if something like that had happened to them, that they were in a higher position that were dating some subordinates and, and um, it went crazy. That would be well, so good if someone I, could tell us that. I think that because the majority of us don't date in our workplace, that's the reason why our answers are kind of skimpy, but I have a hand raised. I have 
um, Dr. Seductive, and I have Anson. So I'll come to you, Anson, after Dr. Seductive. Go ahead, Dr. Seductive. In the case that I was talking about, um, the principal was actually female and the teacher was male. And right, um, the, uh, the male had also had several other in-house affairs. Um, so when he started, th and this is all hearsay, this is not for sure, right. but when he started um, dating the principal, then the other ladies um, got upset and that's how their affair got out because the other lady was like, hey, she's sleeping with him. Um, you know, so she ended up being um, demoted and then later just leaving the district altogether. And he's still there um, talking to other teachers now. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's so just how it- So he was clinging that thing at thing. I, I did, sir, sir, we said we were gonna keep this kind of peachy. <laughs> okay. All right, well, Anson, go ahead, Anson. Um, I wasn't in that situation, but <clears throat> I had a, a associate that tried to put me in that situation. Um, I, I was running the store, and uh, basically, she got upset because I was making her work doing my job. So mm -hmm. uh, she wound up quitting, and she wrote a letter to my boss uh basically kind of implying that the reason for her quitting was because of me mm. which is all good i wasn't mad about it it's bye you know i'm not trying to hold on to nobody you know i've learned a long time ago that everyone can be replaced but this is where it i said she tried to implement that uh sexual harassment type deal so about a week before she quit she was trying to caress my arm by the cash register. The cash register is, being, is on camera. So right then, I recognized that she was trying to get me in the compromising position to where she could say I was brushing up on her or trying to make moves on her. So I wasn't in that situation, but... <clears throat> It was definitely someone was trying to put me in that situation. I'm glad you were smart. And as they say, it's nothing like having cameras. Now, it was funny. We we're talking about um, workplace romance. But it, 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 thank God for cameras for everything. Because even with students, because students will try you. It's so many teachers that have been put in compromising positions because you have students, like one little fellow, you wouldn't even think about a student thinking about certain things in the eighth grade, but every day, oh, you got beautiful feet. Oh, you smell so good. And I would give him direct instruction. Please return to your seat. Give Dr. Bacon, excuse me, Dr. Fabulous six feet, you know, because it's so many, you never know what's in their mindset at that age. So with that being said, that's all I have. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Seductive. She stepped out for a moment. Let me see if she's coming back. Um, well, we'll keep it rolling until Dr. Seductive returns. Okay, so with that being said, every, oh, there is Dr. Seductive. She's back on, she's let, back. Let me handle something real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, well, I have a couple of quick announcements. As you know, Upscale Love for You will be having their first event in October, October 29th, which is going to be a formal masquerade ball. And when I say masquerade ball, I don't know whether or not you can see, but I'm going to show you. And you'll come suited and booted, dressed to impress. Can you all see my face mask? Yeah. Okay. Well, you'll be wearing masks. 
until it's dinner time and then you'll have to unveil and you can walk around and whisper sweet nothing in people ears and they won't know who you are until the actual reveal so please keep a lookout on facebook and instagram and we're going to start selling tickets real soon so i hope each and every one of you get ready get ready get ready and dr seductive is back sorry to you. um so my question is um what are some pros and cons of workplace romance or relationships so um a friend of mine who wants to remain nameless um told me today before you go on the show i know of a good friend who's in a workplace romance and she says that one of the pros is having the hours that you want whenever you're messing with the manager you can get all the hours that you want sometimes they even pad your paycheck uh so um there i guess some there are some pros i guess the cons would be if they ever find out you're gonna probably get fired um so Dr. Feelgood and then Chocolate Pearl, tell me some pros and cons of dating in the workplace. Hey, um, in-house, in-house um, stuff is a pro. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. you know what they, you know where they at, you know what they're doing. Um, one of those things though is I, I did I had that when I when I worked my first job when I moved to South Carolina back in 19. It is six. Mm. Working at working at McDonald's. It was a hot summer, the hottest summer on record. And I worked outside as a maintenance man. Um, there was one young lady, I have I didn't know I, I didn't have a license yet. And one young lady, she was from Newberry, South Carolina. She went to South Carolina State. So we started talking and and it was good because um yeah my You got a ride kinda, and she got a ride? <laughs> yeah and, and my aunt kind of busted us. That's when they lived in that's when they lived in um Harbison. <laughs> And what uh, <laughs> uh, we didn't have the door closed, but we wasn't really we wasn't really getting into it. But my aunt was like, "Hey, what y'all doing up there?" And, and if you knew my aunt, you knew she was she was very she was you know she had zero no filter, nonsense <laughs> zero filter. So I know y'all up there effing. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no closed doors, no closed doors, and um. <laughs> And then another time, um, I, I had a party, I had a party at the house, and uh, my cousin Michelle, who's a year older than me, who's a year older than me, by the way, she just, but she used to act like she was like a lot older than I was. Her and her, her then boyfriend, her ex husband now, they were kind of chaperoning the party, and I had another girl from work up up upstairs in the room. We were kissing and stuff, and she was like, "Y'all need to stop kissing," <laughs> but. <laughs> But um, the pros was that they was at work, so we at, we take our breaks together. We all we smooch. I get in a little little cop feel and stuff like that. Um, but that's that's what I that's that's what I I mean. That was the pro. The cons is when you break up and you gotta go to work with them yeah. every day, and you gotta see their face, and the face just especially if it was a bad breakup. If it was a decent breakup, you know, no 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 love lost, but. If it was a bad breakup, you look at them in the face. Yeah, look them in the face. And you just want to punch them. Mm. That's the con. <laughs> mm. Definitely, definitely. I actually worked with my husband um, once, and we were having some issues. And I was like, I don't want to go to work and see this man today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that can be a real that can be a real con. Taco Pearl girl, what you got? Well, you know, I got a couple of pros and uh, just maybe a few cons. But mm -hmm. like you said, I worked, I met my husband um, at the same company, worked together at the hospital. And, you know, my pros were um, a, a little different, but he's right. When, when you ain't have no money <laughs> for lunch, you know, whoever you dating might make sure you got your little lunch. When you mm -hmm. frustrated or what have you, you know, you can, you know, young boy was like, uh, let's go hit this corner over here. So, you know, we had a little fun, had a little, got a little frisky. And, you know, it, you, you have that, that person there for you in different circumstances. However, 
I've never experienced this, thank goodness. Um, I just left the company. And when I left the company, I left him. Um, you can go where, it will, like Dr. Um, Filga said, you have those retaliations where, you know, you're making life miserable for that person. Every time you walk around, you're saying something smart or y'all start to argue. And then your business gets out into the company and then your reputation could be, you know, can be spoiled or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, they saying, oh yeah, she, she do it with everybody or, you know, it could be, or he, you know, he ain't no good. He, he I know his finances, he broke, you know, it, it could be a lot of negative things um, where it was petty. It became yep. very She's petty. She's sleeping her way to the top. She's sleeping mm -hmm. her way to right. the top. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And it could just be another person on the same level, but because you know, you you was talking to that person. If you decide to have another, you know, workplace romance, that person might get mad and say, no, don't do this. She does this or no, do that. He does that, you know, mm -hmm. or no, he ain't no good. It could be bad because people tend to be very petty when they're upset and disappointed and, and you know, just pushed to the side. Mm -hmm. However, the, like I said, the cons is, you know, you might get that little extra help when you need it you frustrated because your your numbers ain't adding up or right, your boss right. got on your nerve <laughs> you know stuff like that and that little actual edge that little kick that little edge off can help and you come back smiling so okay i can take on the rest of the day because i'm my stress has been relieved so it kind of works out in mm -hmm. a pro way but then mm -hmm. you know it can turn out to be a negative situation later on definitely once i break up mm -hmm. Especially if they know that you, especially if you know if they that they giving that candy away to somebody else. Oh, yes, exactly. yeah, exactly. That that can yeah. definitely turn um a little sour, mm -hmm. right? Which was the case I think with the um with the male you know, teacher the situation I was talking about. Yeah, he was um yeah that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Anson. Oh uh, yeah, pros and cons. So. Which one y'all want first, pros or cons? Pros. We, all want, we always want to start positive, man. Okay. So pros, the first pro I can think of is accessibility. Yeah. Because you work with someone, you always got access to them. And <clears throat> the rendezvous moments can happen spontaneously or when you least expect it. So that's definitely a pro. Um, pro is you can get to know this person uh much better because you are in close proximity with them you get to see them on a regular basis you get to observe them and see little nuances that they may have things that you might not be able to see if you just date them outside of work <clears throat> um i mean i guess another pro could be <laughs> y'all might could do something at work <laughs> That could definitely That's definitely only you know, a little pro there. <laughs> Do a little overtime. <laughs> yeah, I, I have uh, I have experienced such things. Okay, um, okay. Oh yeah, it was fun. But um I guess the cons, you all already mentioned it. You, you have to see the person even when you don't want to. So that definitely is a con. Um the other person could know more about you than you want them to know. And um, uh, I would say the, the last con I would say is that they're not mess with you because of you. They want to oh. mess with you because of your position, your position. Oh. And, and your your wh wh where you stand in the company. So mm -hmm. like like my my cousin said, sleep away to the top, mm -hmm. or uh, you know you want to. The only, per only reason why that person might be messing with you is because of your title. That okay. would definitely be a con. All right, Can Dr. I ask Tracy? a question? Uh, go ahead. Uh, to Tracy, being that she is in HR, Tracy D. Yes, ma'am. Have, have you ever had to deal with any of those type of situations oh, that's a good in question. your position with other um, personnel? <laughs> 
Absolutely. I'm trying to keep quiet. Absolutely. Um, you know you can't be quiet with us. Right, right, girl. There's so many. I, okay, you're. I'm not on mute. My sister's talking about food in the background. Um, we have like um VPs trying to talk to people that are on the phone. Um, there was this one, and I was trying to figure out how to explain this one without confusing people. But when I first came. There was a, a VP who was married to somebody that worked there, but he was cheating on somebody, cheating on her with somebody else that worked there. Long mm. story short, she now has to work with her ex-husband and his new wife. It was really weird. But like they told me that on the first day that I came and I'm like, okay, this is, this is weird. But they acted like they was one happy family, I guess, speaking to each other wouldn't have been me. Um, still getting along and things like that. So I, I um, encounter this a lot at work. Where Ooh. somebody they're they're like it's not favoritism. Um, I ask everyone else if they want to go out. Yeah, but you ask him to go out all the time to lunch, and so it looks the perception is what gets people. Not necessarily that you're doing anything, but it's the perception. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Doctor Fab. Now you all gonna. Say Dr. Fabulous is real crazy, real, real crazy. But I could only think of the cons. And what? my thing, the cons are even if you get a little snatch during that time, how do you clean up? Do you have time to clean up? <laughs> oh, oh, girl, look, look. They call uh -uh, it uh -uh. baby wipes. I'm about to say, you keep baby wipes in your No, baby. you didn't. <laughs> And then I'll be going always because I'm like, I, I guess I, I I can't do that five minute, ten minute kind of thing. You know? so, it no, it's face. the whole look. It's forty five minutes. Five minutes to get there. <laughs> five oh, minutes okay. to, to play. See, that was my mindset. I couldn't the have the rest of the work because I'm like, you'll be walking around some, like, what? No. Okay, you, my all daughter right. teases me all the time. I'm a Girl Scout. I'm a Girl Scout. I try to be prepared at all times. You can ask my family. I always have, I am always prepared for anything. I'm prepared for disasters. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. in my vehicle, my daughter-in-law laughs at me because if I go and hang out with them and, and, and I wind up getting a little drunk and I can't leave, I still got, he, she called it a whole bag. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Must spend the night bag. Everybody got those. Everybody <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't, but when I kept it, I didn't keep it as a whole bag because, you know, because women have things going on with their, you know, personal life. I keep, you know, extra stuff in my car so you won't get sent home and, you know, you have to clock out, you losing time and all that other stuff. I, I was not that type of person. So I always had stuff. And even when I grew up, you know, you don't know if you, if you put enough deodorant on or, you know, you gotta brush your teeth because you know you ate something that you know didn't agree with i'm always prepared so yes i kept baby wipes not only in the sleeve of my car but i kept them in in my whole bag i kept a washcloth i kept a little bag. towel change of underwear all that oh girl you was prepared because i promise you i was sitting here trying to put that together i was like Ooh. <laughs> that's a con for me. That's definitely a con. No, no. no. The looks so big. The looks so okay. big. Right. Yeah, the looks so the look. big. You're right. Okay, well, I'm going to just sit now you back on okay, you, Dr. Seductive. You're not, you're not going right. to ever catch me doing the walk of shame. Okay. Yeah, but it's always the people. Clothes. It's always the okay. people that think they wiped it all away but didn't. And you're like, excuse me, miss. <laughs> See? That Tracy, part, what do you right say there. to that? Tracy, what do you say What's to that? Excuse answer? me. Um <laughs> I can't even stop laughing. Um <laughs> on, from the eight from an HR perspective or just in general? In I guess general. from the HR perspective, like what do you say? Like so so if somebody it would have to have been a complaint because there's some okay cultures that honestly feel like that the majority of time so it would have to come in the form of a complaint that we would have okay. to address yeah yep yep but yeah. personally well, i'm i'm doing the stank face i can't i can't even hold that back half the time so like oh wait a minute <laughs> right but you know what see i know people wanted to ask that question but they weren't that dare daring to ask the question 
But I always say, you don't know if you don't ask. So that's the reason why I ask. I was just, you know, I'm a very vivid person. Mm -hmm. That imagination just runs extremely wild. And I was sitting here thinking like, wait a minute, 15, 20 minutes. I don't think I could get it together. I probably would have to go home or, you know, do something else. And that was the reason why I was like, well, what do you do in that instance? You know? So I but, got it now. I got it. I got I it. I guess another pro would probably be, um, you know, a lot of times we as women need like um, a lot of foreplay. If you're at work all day and they're, you know, having that verbal foreplay with you all day, that can, you know, that, that's yeah, that's your beginning. So, so you might be able right. to handle your business in 15 minutes. That's and right. Still have time to out. And then you build up all, all, all morning long. And still talk all day. So by the time it's time my, for lunch, my, day, my thing is that actually that's what have you earned? Have you earned the? Have you earned the meat? You got to earn the meat. Look, you can't just get look. the meat. Look, no, but that's what happened. It's called, it's called, it's called um foreplay, texting foreplay when you text. And even if you marry, this doesn't even have to be a work oh, thing. Exactly. Even when you have a relationship, exactly. Yeah. If you know that you want to get some that night, so you do that foreplay during the daytime. You you talk, yeah. you talk it's sexy true. to your wife or your girlfriend during the day, get her revved up in her mind, and she's actually doing that mental foreplay so when mm -hmm. it's time to get it on you got it on so like ready. I, said, I just needed that 30 to 45 minutes you know five minutes to get there five minutes to get back that exactly. 45 30 minutes was the time that you get it in okay but check this out my last and final con is when you break up and then someone take that marker and draw a little tiny sausage in the workroom and say, he has a Vienna sausage. <laughs> now that can be a con. Now that's definitely- That's a petty, that's a being con. petty because obviously it wasn't that tiny when you was dealing with him for that long period of time. Uh -uh. So that's not- Now this that's not true. Look, it look, my anaconda don't want none if you got one, Because they was trying to sleep their way to the top and they didn't care what size it was. So then why are you gonna care about it now and embarrass them? They didn't get what they petty. want. Oh, you got this for them. Listen, I think it's petty. Well, it, is, it is petty, but but it does happen. Like you know, if if you get upset, especially um, I guess when, when people are younger, you know, we don't. I know when I was young, I just never thought about a lot of the consequences like I do now. Like I think of a a whole like this could go this way, this way, this way, or this way, this way, this way, instead of just you know. But I, I think that you're right. Um, and when people get jealous too, like say for instance, you know, they broke up with you and then now they're going to somebody else, you know, that that that's an issue as well. So but and I know this is hard for people to understand nowadays, but the thing, the reason I think the reason why I never nobody ever knew is because I knew my role. Right. He knew his role. You knew how to handle certain situations and not be petty. I, I, I'm not, I can be petty, but I don't, it's too much energy to be petty. So act like an adult. So if you're going to do adult things, act like an adult thing. So if you happen to break up, then guess what? You just broke up. You still got to work there. Keep it moving. Don't act all petty and mad and, and suck your teeth and roll your eyes every time you see that person or have something mm -hmm. to say. Leave it alone. It's over. Okay. But there are a lot of people who do not do that. They tend to be petty and got to act they up. Get their and, feelings, they get their feelings and hurt. Get their feelings hurt. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you, when you, if you're going to do something that you know that you have to hide it for whatever reason, you should know your role. Know your and role. And a lot of people don't tend to oh, want to realize you need to make sure you know your role. Because if you sit there and tell everybody everything, and like I said, People went out to lunch with us. We sat in a cafeteria together and nobody knew the difference. Nobody knew the difference. Okay. Hey. Anson has his hand up. Your hand's been up for a little bit. I'm sorry, sweetie. Um, just kind of piggyback on what Chocolate Pearl just said. It's all about being an adult, no matter what you're doing. So anytime when someone's acting petty, that's childish. 
Mm-hmm. So that's childish behavior. All this stuff we was talking about were, oh, were trying to take advantage of somebody because you're at work. That's childish. It's all childish. But right. my hand was raised because I thought of one other thing that could be a pro and a con. Okay. Depends on how you look at it. All right. So mess with someone at work. Restrictions. There's certain things that you just can't do when you want to do them. So I might want a piece right then, but it's the middle of the day and we both at work and we don't get off until four, five hours later. But I got to gotta, gotta come to grips with the reality of what's happening and wait till that four, five hours later. Is it juice of it? Or she going to have to do the same thing. And that uh-huh. could be a pro or because that could make it all that much more intense. Or it could kill it right then. So I think that's pro and the con restrictions. Tracy says if with if where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, <laughs> yes. I um, like I said, you just need to know your role. I even if being a side chick or side guy, um, I know I can't say what I really want to say. Side being a side piece, you still need to know your role. You still need to know your so role. You still need to know your role. So whatever you do, if you're doing it and you know that it's somewhat supposed to be a secret, know your role. And, and no keep, keep in mind, business, man. keep in mind that you know if you're the side piece and you know you're trying to get rid of the main piece, the, you know the side piece position now becomes open. So. <laughs> You know, keep in mind. <laughs> keep keep that in mind, okay? Um, anybody else? There's some as comments a there. as a professional side piece. Um, <laughs> you a professional side piece. You what did you say again? I missed it. I was saying that. I said as comments. a professional side piece, I resemble that remark. <laughs> I bet you do. Um. There was there was something in the chat. Know your role, and um, Danny laughed at it. Dr. Okay. Douglas said, "Know your role." Okay. Um. Any are there any other pros and cons that we want to talk about? Anyone? In reference to in reference to what question? Workplace Work, relationships, workplace Mr. Malik. Workplace relationships. What are some Work. pros and cons? Well, I think a, uh, a pro is you're there with her, you know, and she's got an eye on you, you got an eye on her, and you're going to keep everything strictly work. But then once you get off, then you back to the normal you know, the, yeah yeah the normal couple so you got i say so that i think it, it can a pro is it can help you stay in line all right now the 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 con is going to be you're going to get tired of your girl working with you every day because if she's petty talk about why are you looking at dr lark i mean i've been seeing you staying at her she's staying at you so, so you start paying attention too much to two things, too many things that don't really need to be observed. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and exactly. That can be, now that's where the problems gonna start coming in right there. So that's the pros and cons on my behalf. Yeah, Tracy said, "Icon is I need to miss you a little bit." Yeah, I need to miss you a little bit. I really do. Right. Yeah. 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 I do um, agree Dr. with that. The doctor. Yeah. Do you know Danny Godfrey? I do. That's my cousin. Okay. Is that the one that? had the two children uh, uh, is that uh, the same person we're not bringing up the past now yeah uh, 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 that's him yeah that's him oh okay he quiet tonight okay yeah he <laughs> might be a little quiet tonight he's been traveling he might be a little quiet tonight okay all right i was just trying to figure out i said i know that name from somewhere okay all right then i'm and k a k a how you doing this evening who is no, i don't know k a Kim D. No, Kim D. Kim Kim D. I, I know I know Kim D. Yeah, we that's, that's a, lot. a great a great sister friend of ours. Okay, yeah. hey, Dr. Fabulous. Hey, Dr. Fabulous. 
I work around a bunch of men. That's why you ain't hear me talk about nothing. <laughs> you ain't having no work at All right. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh, he was he was listening. He he was he was listening. Okay, you work to around. Do, me? So, I used to do construction, and there'd be some guys that was hitting on me. Um, that's you. Ain't <laughs> no, <it's not> <laughs> no, I'm good. Um, I'm good. Kim D wanted to, um, I guess, introduce herself. Let us know who you are, Kim D, <clears throat> and where you calling from, checking in from. Hey y'all. Hey. Um, I- <laughs> I'm Kim. I'm in South Carolina. So it's my first night on. I'm enjoying listening. Yay. So this is great conversation. Well, all She's been trying right, to get Kim, on for a while now. Who invited you, Kim? Um, I was invited by my sister friend Tawana and Andre. Chocolate right, Pearl and, right. and Dr. Dr. Feelgood. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot. That's okay. You fine. <laughs> All right, all right. You know, I just see these names and I'm like, okay, okay. I'm I'm trying to figure out who you are. So next time it, you know, Dr. Fabulous and no, I, I have a hand raised. Tracy D, go ahead, or is it Tina M? Which one? It is me. It's Tracy. I just thought of this one. It may bring a con is it may bring out insecurity. So if you're looking all good and your man works with you, he might start to notice people looking at you and it starts unnecessary arguments or vice versa oh my gosh that mm-hmm. girl was looking at you don't mm-hmm. wear this because so and so so it may breathe insecurities and, and um mess up your relationship a little bit you, why are you wearing right. no gray sweatpants to work no gray sweatpants <laughs> not on my watch not on my watch no, no, hey it's i don't wear gray put on some jeans. i wear biker shorts okay that's special <laughs> no gray sweatpants though <laughs> yeah because you know what you know, tracy you're different. right though you, Tracy, you're right. There was times when, because I worked at a warehouse and there were times where, you know, pe- I, the way I dress, if, if the people who do know me, they know how I dress and I dress a little sexy, you know, and when I'm at work, I still dress appropriate, but I still, you know. You still situate. sexy, girl. You still sexy. Right. And so you have a lot of men, especially if they work in the warehouse and there's time because I did work in the office part of the warehouse, I had to go into the warehouse mm. itself and um, you, there's mostly guys and they see you and they see me in my pencil skirt. I ain't gonna lie to you, I didn't mind wearing that pencil skirt and get the little tension. Right. But they, you know, when you, if you're messing with someone that they don't know that you're messing with, they have to be quiet about it, but they'll let you know later on. You know, I see you was over there walking through there and I seen such and such say this and such and such say that. So you have to go doing, you know, doing that. Cause I, I dealt with a lot of truck drivers and those truck drivers, when they bought in the money and I had to count it or they bought in the check, they would flirt with you. And of course mm-hmm. I'm a big flirt. I'm a big yeah, flirt. You, and I, you, I was flirting back. And then sometimes that person had to come where I was and seen those truck drivers and right. they couldn't say anything, but then they said something to you later on. Even talking pro, especially the one that those of us with, a little bit of a backside. I mean, we walk yes, right exactly. Hello. I love my pencil heels. skirt. Yeah, there we yeah. go. And I love my pencil skirt and my high heels, and it, it lifts it up a little bit. More. Yeah. Like big butts, and I just can't not lie. <laughs> Those other brothers can't. Don't start me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but a little itty bitty waist. And, okay, Anson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I used to uh, be a store manager for a major retail chain and one thing I used to always tell my associates is don't mess with anyone that work in this company especially if the stores that they work at is somewhere nearby and easily accessible because Mm -hmm. that's one hell of a thing to manage trying to manage two people that's messing with each other because when you're dealing with customers if you're in the retail setting then those two might not work properly or they might get jealous for the littlest things Mm -hmm. things that they shouldn't get jealous about so say for instance uh i got two associates they decide they want to start dating each other them two are working on the same day but a customer 
you know, besides they want to flirt with the other. But the 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 person that they talking to, they start getting a little jealous, or they start acting funny, or as we said earlier, petty, you mm-hmm. know, or petty afterwards after the customer leave, they start back to petty, and then they have this attitude back and forth between each other. That can really change the dynamic of your work environment. So always, always shunned anyone uh, dating each other, mess with each other <laughs> in the workplace because that causes a whole lot of drama, especially if they can't control their emotions. Tracy said, "No gray sweatpants in the um in the workplace." Tracy, um, I you know I'm a teacher, right? <laughs> And there's a few coaches on staff. Honey, I don't mind the gray sweatpants. I'm like, oh, I don't mind it at all. So special. So special. Girl, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. But you know what? That's funny that you said that. We don't have coaches, but our school nurse is a male, and he just looked absolutely wonderful every day with what he wears, you know. And I said, you know what? God is so good. How about he's our youth pastor's husband at my church? So all them little women that be having that little eye, I said, okay, okay. He a married man. I got to, oh, but I forgot about you. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Boyfriend. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I, I forgot about that. He's, but, still, he's you know, still coming to work. <laughs> oh, he's coming to work. But his wife anoint him before he leave the house. <laughs> yeah, but that annoying be wearing off about lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all clowning, y'all clowning. Mm. Tanique, Tanique, well, Clay, I see you got your hair raised, girl. Go ahead. <laughs> What up, y'all? What up, family? Y'all know oh, it's Ricky. Ricky. What up? Hey, Ricky. Hi, everybody, I'm here what too. Up? Now, listen, the last person that answered that question, why you blow him up like that? He should say it. And it's like, <laughs> you never know. How about if it's him and his wife, you know, separates or whatever the case is down the line. And yeah. a person, you know, saying person at the church, you know, he want to get involved. But now you just say, oh, no, he... Go ahead, take him. And she goes somewhere else. You can't do that. No, I'm about it's up to him to say whether or not he's married. You know, like yeah. we, we can't listen, protect listen. other people's and vows. Then, we can't protect yeah. other people's vows and morals. That's and, up to him. And then at the job, if you do that, <laughs> you know, if you, if you, you know what I'm saying? If you mess around at the job, that shit is mad dangerous because they could just come in one day and, you know, they'd be on a period or something like that and just like, oh, you touched me up, sexual harassment. Now you lost your whole shit. But Gotta now, if back. that's your friend, if that's your friend, you're supposed to put your friend on. Like, that's a married man. I'm just telling you. They change but, up. There's nobody here that could be a, se- a side piece. I'm sorry. You could be a side piece for how long? You know what forever. I'm saying? It can't be forever. They're going to have feelings. Feelings change people. And it's like, you and know you what? You could be a side piece with feelings forever. So check this, check this yo, out. Yo, Rick, I declare for the draft as a side piece. So <laughs> <what you're- laughs> Wait. No, I understand. That's not, but it'd it be sometimes like, all right, you're a side, she a side piece, whatever. And later on, how about she bump in or date or go out with someone else? You and know what I'm saying? your business. But she might have feelings <laughs> for that. For that person now. now it's like, damn, my side piece I was with for years. Shit, what's going on See, now? That That's mm-hmm. your problem, Rick. You used to be a main. You're used to being a main. You know, mm-hmm. side side dudes know they roll. No, they don't be wrong. getting big. They don't be getting into other, other things. That ain't got nothing to do with me. As long it the, the side piece song forever is just be good to me by the SOS band. So yeah. I don't care about those other people. Just be good to me. Just, just be, be good, good to, to me. me. <laughs> to me, yeah. not that I don't care about them. Be yeah. good to me. That's side piece right there. Yeah. All right. So how about they could be good to you and dating or going with someone else? You might feel jealous. You're gonna feel jealous. You go to the movies. No, you're wrong. You're gonna feel jealous. You are. No, you're damn wrong. Right. No, <laughs> you need to know your role. You couldn't you hold it no longer, Danny. I right, tell me about do roles change? If that but roles, if that if roles change, you still wrong. you need to know it. But do roles change? It. Just like Not jobs, right? piece, bro. And but then you need to know what side piece you're dealing with. You just can't be dealing with any side piece. 
Don't you need no. to have an understanding with that? Don't stock. bring crazy you, you, into you the equation. You got to write down a contract. You still need to know your role. Where Don't the bring violin? crazy into the Where's equation. Where's the violin? I want the violin. And play your Feelings. position. Hey, nothing you don't more see than hey, hey, Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> you don't see you don't see Russell Westbrook playing center, right? He playing his position. So when you in the side piece role, you play the side your piece. Position. Now, I, I, now check this out. That is correct. But do they play certain roles after time? Before he would just, oh, just coming in, coming in. He came, now he got to play a whole new different There's role. no such thing as an upgrade in the side piece. No, stay no. in your position. You signed up for something. Stay there. There's no, there's no upgrade. I don't, I don't know if you heard me before, but I said, you know, if you upgrade from the side piece to the main piece, then the side piece position is open. You don't want that. Now, how about y'all? No. How about this side pieces? And next thing you know, the side piece is pregnant by mistake or something. Whoa. You still yeah, need to know your role. You need to wrap it up, cut but it out, do something. But if you want to be a side, side piece, piece, and if you want to be a, if you're going to have a workplace romance, and you know it's strictly a romance exactly. or an affair, you still need to know your role and you need to be responsible. Exactly. If you can't be exactly. responsible, then you're yeah, held right, responsible right, for right. what's going to happen at the yeah, end. But his so role has changed. You sitting there He's trying to make it Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. His role changed. Now he's like, oh, snap. Stuff happens. In a, it Yo, comes so in a, you still, no matter what, you still done. play your role. Let, let's, bring this, let's bring this all back in. Let's bring this Thank all you. back in. Thank you. Bring Thank us all you. back in. Back, back to you, Doctor Seductive. <laughs>